Ah, Lunenburg. Nova Scotia's crown jewel, and a place that was often described by our good sailing friend Andy Shell as his favorite arbor entrance in the whole world. And there is a reason for that. Founded in 1753, Lunenburg was one of the first British attempts to settle Protestants in Nova Scotia. But it flourished in the late 1800s, when it prospered through offshore fishing, shipbuilding, farming and trade. It has since then retained most of its layout, architecture and even industry, which earned the city the title of UNESCO World Heritage Site, after being considered one of the best examples of planned British colonial settlement in North America. If Lunenburg has since then remained a fishing town, it now also thrives on tourism and a post-Covid influx of new inhabitants looking for better horizons. So yeah, we were really excited to come all the way here and finally get to enjoy Nova Scotia's incredible scenery. And if you have followed this channel for a while, you know that this was our fourth attempt to do that. But I will not lie, as delighted as we were to finally have succeeded in sailing Polisil to the Canadian promised land, our days have for the most part looked like this. Andy! Which way to the field dock? I can't see anything. You can see a mooring boy. I can see a few mooring boys. And there is a boat back there. So since we arrived in Lunenburg, this is pretty much how it's been. I think that right now the fog is lifting. I think that it looks really beautiful. I really don't mind the fog. Sometimes it's really dense and we can't see anything, but it rarely lasts for a very long time. And uh, when the sun comes out, like it is right now, the views are just spectacular. I think that the fog gives Lunenburg this mystic, eerie type of atmosphere. And it has something magical. So back there, you may see a mass that is moving and that is our friend Eddie going to the fuel dock. We need to get a little bit of fuel because, well, use a little bit of fuel to get up here because there's no wind like today. But Lunenburg is a fishing town, not really a marina town. So when the big boats need fuel, they call the fuel truck. Uh, and when the small boats need fuel, well, I don't really know what they do. They do what we do and call the fuel truck too. And because we don't need a lot of fuel and Andy doesn't need a lot of fuel, we decided to combine efforts so we could take a little bit more fuel and actually get the fuel truck to come to us. So we're gonna go raft up to Andy and take on some fuel. So Andy arrived on his boat Falcon a couple of days ago. Uh, Andy is a much bigger boat than we are. How big is the far? 65 feet. 65 feet, it's a beast. So we're gonna go raft up against the far as opposed to the far rafting up against tiny us. Right. Uh, I want you on the port side. Look at that, you guys. Look how fast that fog is lifting. Isn't that incredible? That amount of fog on the coast is just oh, something special. How's that, Dennis? Yeah, and also it's going to be quite shallow if you go further. Yeah, yeah it will. Okay, up that line. Yeah, the stern line needs to be much, much tighter. Hey guys. Hi Andy. Bonjour Sophie. Oh, good morning. How are you? I am wonderful. How about that fog, eh? That was beautiful. It was really cool. Wasn't that amazing? Oh, we gotta do this. <laughs> uh, whenever someone wants to pass over a hose, I can take it. Are we ready to start? I love the uh, drying laundry. Well, yeah, drying. <laughs> yeah, quote unquote, yeah. yeah. How often do you have sailboats coming to fuel here? Uh, all summer. Really? Yeah, we've got one here called Fruition, the 80 foot catch. That's yeah, right, that's yeah. Good. Yeah, they're here all summer. Huh. So I fueled him three times already. No problem. I don't think it comes off. Okay, Ryan, I need pressure in this hose. Ryan! Ryan Allison, get your butt over here! <laughs> now! <laughs> Yesterday! Okay. Hey, now it's on. Now it's on. 
So normally when it comes to water, we are relatively self-sufficient because of our water maker and our big battery bank. We're able to self-sufficiently produce our water. But because of the fog and the clouds and the rain that we've had in the last week, it's been uh, really hard for us to use our water maker because we didn't get enough power from our solar array. Uh, we, we don't get anything when, uh, when we have fog or rain or uh, heavy clouds. So in order to uh, top up our batteries, we would use our engine and our high output alternator but it was simply not enough for us to use our water maker as much as we would want to use it. Uh, this is very rare. So we knew that we were gonna come to the dock to top up the fuel tank. And uh, that's, yeah, we, we just used our water knowing that we would fill the tanks here at the dock. Okay, so it turns out the grocery store is right next to the dock and because uh, the next part of our adventure is taking us to uh, bays that are a little bit more remote from uh, well, any kind of grocery store really. We're gonna go to the grocery store, do a little bit of a restocking. All right, what do we get? I have no idea. Watch out, this is heavy. I got it. Did everybody go check out the boats? Yeah, okay. they're up there now with Paul if you want to run up quick. Oh yeah. And then kind of grab onto this pylon. And then, yeah, exactly. Foot, make it, yeah. Yep. And then you got okay. a big step there. Good job, hon. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna put the groceries away and in that same time, we're gonna start moving our butts back on the morning ball. There are a few things that we wanna do this afternoon before we leave tomorrow for uh, Mahoney Bay. And uh, one of those is, oh hi, that's very bad framing. <laughs> but one of those things is I really wanna do the laundry because the laundromat, the, uh, the washing machine here is really accessible and it's really big. And so I can do towels and sheets before we go into more rural areas in Nova Scotia. If you live in Canada, or maybe if you visit only, and unlike me, you still like to pay for your stuff cash, you will most likely end up with a Canadian dime in your pocket. And if you give it a close look, you might notice a boat on. That boat is the Blue Nose, a famous sailing ship that both raced and fished, and since she was built in Lunenburg in 1921, became an important Canadian symbol. Sadly, in 1946, the Blue Nose wrecked on a coral reef near Haiti while transporting bananas, which has me wonder if that had anything to do with the superstition that carrying bananas on board a boat is bad luck, but that's probably for another video. Since then, the Blue Nose was commemorated with the construction of the Blue Nose II in 1963, a replica of that 1963 replica now sails out of Lunenburg, and today she is back in town, which actually prompted us to extend our stay in the city so we could be part of the celebration ourselves. Now the question is, how do they dock that thing? Answer in a moment. Our boat Polo Seal is 40 feet long and has a bow thruster to make it easier to maneuver in close quarters. But even after seven years of sailing her, we still find it somewhat stressful to dock. The Blue Nose, on the other hand, is 140 feet long and most likely does not have a bow thruster. So watching this beast of a boat getting close to the dock is making me feel both nervous and also somewhat inadequate. But hey, the only other crew that we have on board kind of lacks the ability to throw a line, so I guess I'll give myself a pass. I don't believe that a bow thruster was involved, but definitely lots of people on the dock to catch the lines. So what's the program for the rest of the afternoon, Ryan? We gotta get some laundry done today, and you've got a meeting, and then we need to take the flu for a walk. Okay, let's go do the laundry. Look at her. Look at that launcher. Making yourself comfy. It. 
So we actually have a washing machine on board that we like using, but it's uh, not as good for sheets and towel and if I want to do like a massive load of laundry, which is what I want to do now. Uh, and those are really nice, they're super big, uh, they're cheap to use, you pay per day instead of per load, it's so nice. Love the Alright, this is a big load. So Nova Scotia is uh, undoubtedly a beautiful place to visit. Lunenburg is so picturesque, the sceneries are incredible. We love being here, oh, not to mention the, the mild temperatures, you know? Mild summer, so underrated. Uh, but it is probably time that I let you in on why I actually wanted to come here. It's not what I just said. No, the reason why we wanted to come to Nova Scotia is for the food. This is scallops and chips, and it is amazing. I'm not a big seafood guy, but this is pretty good. Ah, uh, yes, now you know. Ten years ago, I learned that Nova Scotia is the best place on earth to eat scallops, and since that time, I made a promise to myself that I would come and eat all the seafood. So you've probably noticed the big red houses on Lunenburg's waterfront, and some of them belong to Adams and Nicole, which is a big scallops fishery here in Nova Scotia, and the scallops are delicious. And if you walk around town, you may even find the ship's captain Samuel Nichol's house. Uh, and no, he was not actually the founder of the company, but uh, still a neat looking house. One thing that is fascinating when uh, walking the streets of Lunenburg is that um, they're very old, obviously, a lot of them are from uh, the 19th century and you can see on the front of the house sometimes they have plaques to say when the house was built and who it was built for and I found it so cool it really is like walking back in time another favorite spot of ours is uh, the Beach Bee it is a great restaurant but they also have a fantastic drink menu and uh, Ryan and I have made it a little bit of a habit to come here and sit at the bar the bar is lovely and just share a drink, to brief on the day. This is a Sauvignon Blanc from Nova Scotia. Wild Rock. It comes from Wolfville. We're gonna try to go there before the end of uh, our Nova Scotia stay. But I, I don't know why I felt I fell in love with it so much. It is a really good Sauvignon Blanc. It's like light and deep, but it doesn't have like the biting crisp that uh, a lot of Sauvignon Blanc have. It's really good. Who knew that you would come to Nova Scotia for wine? I'm into it. In the little time that we spent here, I developed a few favorite spots, and there are there are a few of those actually. One of them is uh, Laughing Whale, which is a, a coffee roaster, and uh, I just like to come there to grab a grab a cup of coffee. But they also roast beans that are quite delicious. Tonight we're going to the Grand Banker, which is another place that we haven't tried. And we're going there with uh, our friend Andy and his dad. I'm gonna leave Nova Scotia with an extra, an extra few kilos, but I don't care. Uh, I am here for all the food. This lobster roll was so good. Emphasis on was. <laughs> So good. It was July in Lunenburg, and the locals wouldn't stop telling us how unusual the weather was for this time of the year. And for all the time we spent on the mooring ball in the city, it mostly hid itself behind a thick curtain of fog or extreme rain. One day, it was raining to a level that we had never experienced before. Uh, and yet people were still sailing in that weather, which I don't understand, but yeah. Um, Good on you guys. But that night, the sky cleared out, the clouds turned pink, and for the first time in a long time, Ryan and I hopped in the dinghy just so that we could enjoy the views and the moment. And of course, film it, huh? because uh, yeah, you and I would not be here without it. 
This reminded me of how much sometimes all you need to do is to give a place or a person enough time to reveal their best self. Which is highly incompatible with the fast pace of life that most of us inflict upon ourselves. And yes, that includes Ryan and I a lot of the time. But this year, we are enjoying some of the slowest sailing season ever. And after weeks of rain and fog, these views felt like a true gift. <laughs> of course, they are playing drunken sailor. Thanks, Ryan. Mm -hmm. That was pretty. It was nice, yeah. You're pretty. Oh, thanks, honey. So are you. Okay, Barnes, off the boat. Mm -hmm.